Welcome to Central Missouri Tomorrow. I'm Chuck Ambrose. Thank you for joining us for the third episode of our show from the campus of the University of Central Missouri. This evening we'll be speaking with two experts about locally grown foods here in Central Missouri. Jeannie Schwartz is the owner of Show Me Produce, a coal camp farm featuring pesticide-free vegetables grown largely in a hydroponic growing facility and high tunnels that allow for a longer growing season. She and her son market their produce primarily through farmers markets, restaurants, local retail outlets, and also directly to consumers. Beverly Rawlings is from Sedalia and became a local foods advocate after concluding that traditional treatments for an autoimmune disease were making her symptoms worse. Her search for the healthiest foods available eventually led to her starting the Sedalia Area Farmers Market in 2009. She credits the reversal of her disease to her change of a diet and the nutrients available in fresh local fruits and vegetables. She and her husband live in Sedalia with their three children. Jeannie, Beverly, thank you for being a part of our show. Thank you for having us. We're so excited to be here. We are. Thank you. And uh, we know that you are what you eat. Yes. And what a great topic, uh, especially here in central Missouri, to consider uh, what food means to us today. And, um, Beverly, let me start with you. It, it has had an impact on your life and maybe your journey. Maybe that would be a great place to start. Okay. Um, well, on my 34th birthday, I um, was having some symptoms such as uh, limping, uh, numbness on my right side, uh, vision problems, fatigue, um, uh, temper problems. Um, and uh, my doctor mentioned to me that it was a possibility that I have multiple sclerosis. Uh, at the time, he recommended that I visited a chiropractor who um, encouraged me to take a nutritionally based approach to dealing with what I had because my body wasn't always like that and that there must be some way to reverse what was going on. So um, in doing more and more research, uh, I found that the diet that I was on, which was the standard American diet of uh, lots of fast food and, and convenience foods, was horrible for my body. And the very best inputs were fresh fruits and vegetables. And um, long story short, over a period of about two years, I virtually reversed what was going on with me. And today, I am um, very active and medication free. Uh, you know, with uh, the nation's attention really turning to what we eat and its effects on our body, uh, I hear you saying that that's really made a, a difference. And how did you start the discovery process of knowing uh, how to kind of move from that convenience mentality about food to, to being very deliberate in what you eat? Well, the very most difficult um, item was changing how I shopped. Uh, at the grocery store, you know, as, uh, in the middle portion of the store, buying a lot of those convenience foods and not really um, paying a lot of attention to the fruits and vegetables section. So relearning how to shop was the first and most important item because obviously what you prepare at home um, is going to be foundational to your health. And uh, so seeing those fruits and vegetables in the store was important, but then I thought, how long have they been sitting there? You know, is it really the maximum nutrients that I could get? So what is the maximum nutrients that I could get? And, and of course, it, the answer there was fresh fruits and vegetables that were grown locally. And Jeannie, you've had a, a journey that includes uh, growing up on a, a hobby farm in Warren County, and it's, it's led you uh, to becoming a producer of what we would not only consider to be uh, locally grown, but foods that are grown in an environment that kind of measures what goes into them so that freshness and nutrition is important. It's been kind of a long, twisted road, but yeah, um, we started out on a hobby farm, and we've I've always been active in, in agriculture, did the gardening and, and raised livestock as a youth and, and that sort of thing. Spent some time at the University of Missouri, got a degree in business thinking that that was where I wanted to be. And I did spend a few years in the corporate world doing, doing management and, and that was fine. My kids came along, I, s I decided to stay home with my kids and then I started looking for something else for me to do and ended up in actually growing bedding plants because I wanted to grow my own tomatoes and so I started growing my own tomato plants and it morphed into a, a business. Um, and then about 10 years ago we relocated from the St. Louis, the, the east, the western side of St. Louis to where we're at now in central Missouri, um, just simply looking for a little bit quieter lifestyle and a little more 
uh, more room, I guess, would be the best way to put it. So that's how we ended up here and started into growing um, produce for for the local people. Um, and it's it's been quite a challenge. And you use some some very cutting edge techniques. When I say hydroponic, uh, what, what does that mean? Um, hydroponic means grown in water and y we are kind of cutting edge. It's, it's really an exciting thing to see and do. Um, it's a very controlled environment and we provide the plant with the ideal growing conditions so that the nutrients are available to it and it can grow as quickly as possible and still maintain um, good nutrient value for the you know when, for the consumer with the end result and it's a very tender very um, very fresh um, product it keeps well it's got a lot of nutrient value it's very easy to digest um, actually people that have a lot of digestive problems find that our lettuce is one of the few that they can eat doesn't give them some trouble so and it all goes back to how it's grown. I get off work at, at five o'clock. Uh, I'm in a hurry. Uh, I need to get dinner on the table. I go into a local uh, supermarket. Uh, what shouldn't I do? Well, um, you shouldn't um, shop hungry, <laughs> <preferably. laughs> but given if you are, uh, shoot for the fruits and vegetables first. Um, and uh, that's really going to be where your nutrients are coming from and where it's very healthy. So find something that's easy, maybe doesn't need actual cooking, you know, whether it's uh, grapes or blueberries or carrots. whatever, some carrots that you there can you just go. pop right into your mouth with any prep without any preparation is a great place to start. And then you can work on your protein and so on and so forth um, as you're enjoying and, and taking the edge off that appetite. But a lot of people go straight for a sugary item when they're um, very hungry, um, but I encourage people to start with fruits and vegetables when they're very hungry and, uh, and take advantage of that hunger to get some really nutrient-dense foods in them. Our show focuses on Central Missouri, so our location means a lot to our topic. We've been discussing a lot of the aspects of the foods produced. Now let's take a few minutes to hear firsthand from some of the customers who buy locally grown products and also from the producers themselves who ensure that these items are available to Central Missouri. Spring and summer are great times to enjoy locally grown produce in Central Missouri. Gardens are blooming and farmers markets are open, making it easier for health conscious eaters to enjoy fresh fruits and vegetables. Pam Lindstrom recently visited the Sedalia area farmers market and says locally grown products are important for her family. I know that when I buy them from people like this that they were grown and picked by hand by them and, and not mass produced. I feel very confident that they probably don't have a lot of chemicals and stuff like that in them. And so I feel like that's important for my health as well. I bought today, I have bought fresh carrots. You gotta see these carrots. They are, aren't those fabulous? Carrots and radishes, um, some lettuces, and my husband is a huge egg eater. So um, there's some people here I've been buying eggs from. Um, sometimes they'll deliver them to my house, um, or I buy them here. The fresh, freshest eggs you can find. They're wonderful. <laughs> Freshness and selection are what draw Karen Lynch to the bi-weekly market. What I like here is it's just so fresh. And all of the produce and everything is made by the people who are selling it and uh, it's just really high quality. It's very important to me. I try to buy organic as much as I can. It's a little bit hard to find a lot of things here uh, that are organic, so we're very happy when we can. I really like the plants. They have beautiful, healthy plants, um, herb plants, the flowers, um, the soap that they make, and everything is just, it's just a very high quality. Tegan Tucker, a Green Ridge wool and handmade soap vendor, believes her products offer custom qualities that mass-produced items just can't match. We do a couple of different things. We have our own sheep and we do basically everything from the sheep to the finished product and everything in between. We do <laughs> fly soap, it's all handmade and organic and we have different flavors, scents, things like that. They're all natural. We try not to do any kind of chemical or anything like that. You know, with organic, it's kind of easier to to pinpoint what you want it to do for you. You know, the store-bought soap is just a different smell, usually. But we have soap that, you know, people have told us helps with psoriasis and things like that. Um, so it kind of has some medicinal purposes as well. So there's more of a, a quality to it that way than a lot of the store-bought soaps. Jim Thomas, Jr. of Share Life Farms is a fruit and vegetable grower from Marshall. 
He sells his organic produce at several area farmers markets and says that growing a variety of different fruits and vegetables is an important aspect of his operation. Share Life Farms is comprised, the total acreage is 120 acres, but we do a wide variety of tomatoes and corn, and uh, then we do a lot of greens. We sell a lot of lettuce, spinach. Uh, uh, right now, we're uh, known as the kale people in Columbia. Uh, we have six varieties of kale we're growing, uh, take to market. Um, and then we do root crops, turnips, uh, do a lot of potatoes. Uh, we've got about 1,100 pounds of potatoes in the ground uh, now that we'll dig uh, uh, through the summer and in the fall. Um, try to do sweet potatoes. I just haven't learned how to cure them yet to keep them. Uh, we've had trouble sweet potatoes, but uh, then we'll do the summer vegetables, uh, eggplant and peppers. Uh, so we, we do most, uh, uh, most all varieties. We do some of the Asian greens, uh, most varieties of vegetables you can find in the garden catalog. Although he started farming with traditional farming methods, Thomas says several years ago he switched and became a certified organic grower. And his customers appreciate the care and effort he puts into his produce. Certified organic means that, uh, first of all, to originally get certified, you have to be off of all commercial uh, fertilizers and chemicals for a, a minimum of three years. Uh, and then uh, you go through a certification process. Uh, you apply to a certification agency. Uh, uh, you uh, give them an organic systems farm plan uh, that you follow. Uh, you put down what you're going to plant, where you're going to plant it. Uh, tell them where you get your uh, seeds from. Um, and there, there are rules uh, according to the NOP that you have to follow. And then uh, every year they come out and do an on-farm inspection uh, to see that you are doing what you say you're doing. One of the reasons that we're certified organic is it gives us credibility. We are inspected by a third-party certifier uh, that and that is their job is strictly to to ensure that we're doing what we say we're doing and so when a person buys certified organic produce uh, they know it's been grown in in accordance with the standards set up by the national organic program customers that come to the farmers market for the first time and buy local compared to use uh, they're used to buying through the grocery store chains uh, they can't believe the freshness uh, of the product and also how much longer it lasts. Uh, I know uh, specifically eggs, uh, we sell certified organic eggs and uh, 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 our customers, I know when we first started doing that, uh, we had people, well they, they didn't want to buy an egg, eggs this week because they had a few left in the ice box and they didn't want them to go bad. And we had a hard time convincing them that, you know, they'd be all right next week. And uh, our eggs, uh, we sell out every week, so our eggs are the ones that have been gathered this week. So they're just uh, less than a week old when they get to market. And so, uh, but people just, you know, they just comment how much uh, fresher our food is and how much longer it lasts, how mu uh, much better it keeps than what they're used to uh, in the grocery stores. Jim Thomas believes that his locally grown organic produce is about more than just selling a product to customers. We develop a, a relationship with these people, you know, that, that uh, we, we feel privileged to be able to provide them uh, uh, not only healthy, clean food, but uh, adequate food for their families when they want it. With buying local, you've got people that, you know, most all of our stuff is harvested for the Saturday market Thursday and Friday. Uh, we, you know, some of the things now, like we may pull radishes this week and we can keep them a week because they're going to get too big uh, before Saturday. And so some things you harvest a little bit in advance, but most of our stuff is, you know, harvested within hours of its marketing. When we got into drug marketing, the, the, the most rewarding thing to me was people actually, uh, they actually appreciate the fact that you were growing a quality product. Beverly, it's great to see what local growers are doing, and it's exciting to see the quality of the, the produce. H how do you distribute what you grow? T tell us where it, it goes from your farm to where. We do a lot of our, of our produce goes through the farmer's market, um, probably about 50%. The other percentage goes to, uh, we deal with some, some local restaurants, um, and that's really exciting for us that, that the restaurants are willing to work with us and the constraints that we have to, to provide local food through their restaurant. Um, the other portion of our, of our market is CSAs, which is Community Supported Agriculture, and we do an awful lot with that, um, with a couple of CSAs in the area, and that gets our food out to a, to a lot more people. You know, it's, it's interesting to see the value of, of organic and of course here in Missouri a, a lot of us 
perhaps have a garden in our backyard and want to grow not only fresh but also healthy vegetables. Could you give us some tips? There is a wide, wide source of information out there and I would just tell people to jump on the web, uh, go to the library, but absolutely if you've got any interest or room to grow, go for it because it's that's absolutely the best thing for you. And you can, you know, it's, it's fun and it's exciting and it's a great thing to get kids involved in um, and that helps it helps get them engaged so that they're more willing to try different things and they're more willing you know the best way to get a kid to eat fresh green beans is to grow them and say hey let's go pick some of those green beans and they get really excited about it and it's fun do you have a, a certain product that you grow that restaurants really have a, a high demand for what, what, what do they want from you one of our most popular items is arugula um, and that's kind of a, a, a little bit of a specialty green and and people either love it or they hate it but that's what a lot of our restaurants do and it's it's kind of a kind of a I want to call it a yuppie food. I don't know if that's a proper term anymore, but uh, it, it's something that a lot of a lot of restaurants use. Look so. and, and mm -hmm. see. Yeah. Um, as we were talking, Beverly, there's a lot of things in food that doesn't necessarily have to be there. True. Shelf life, uh, appearance. Right. Mm -hmm. What are some of those things, and maybe some things to stay away from? Well, um, a prime example uh, would be sour cream for example um, much uh, many brands of sour cream have uh, blued food coloring in them to make them look whiter than um, just a standard sour cream uh, but you know when they're when they're marketing it and taste testing and asking consumers which way they would rather buy you know uh, they choose the whiter looking one because they think it looks prettier but yet if the consumer knew that they were trading off health for an additive to their food they'd probably make a different choice and that's another beautiful thing about local food is those additives are not there and we define locally grown uh, you maybe perhaps come at it from distribution from the farmers market as a producer. Uh, Jeannie, how do you define locally grown? In my mind, locally grown is within a couple of hours of you. You're looking at something that's not spent its lifetime on the truck uh, or in refrigerated storage. That to me is local. You know, and if you can, when you're in the grocery store and if that's where you end up shopping, look for things that are produced locally. And more and more grocery stores are willing to carry local foods, particularly as consumers ask for them. Um, you know, we've had good response from local grocery stores as far as carrying our products and that kind of thing. So absolutely look for something that's that's within a couple of hours of you if you can at all. In terms like free range and other labels that you see on food, uh, organic, uh, is there just a general classification that we should know about? Well, I think that it's important for people to know uh, what the different categories are. Um, certainly, as Jim Thomas said, that he had to go through a third-party certifier to become certified organic. Jeannie's pesticide-free, but she's not certified organic. But that is what I'm looking for when I buy a food. Is it pesticide-free and how did she grow it? Um, certainly, that's important to me. Jeannie opens her farm for visits so that um, customers can know how she handles the food. Mm -hmm. So. Um, um, but one thing that I think is really important for people to know is that the label natural doesn't mean anything. There is no regulation behind the word natural. And so uh, I believe it was 7-Up in the last few years that tried to claim that their product was natural. And uh, they were actually sued for it because people did not think that that would accurately reflect by any means what they think they're getting in a product. So it's, it's important to know what a label means and to be careful. It is. Uh, and of course, again, if you don't define those and, and let people know what they are, it's, it's hard to know. So many choices. We're a choice society as well. Exactly. We need to educate ourselves better. Sedalia somewhat sits at one of our crossroads of central Missouri. There's a lot of traffic going east and west and north and south. Uh, describe a little bit about who comes to the farmer's market, uh, what we could look for, uh, and then we'll get to some particulars about when uh, we can be there. Okay. Uh, for the most part, um, the Sedalia Area Farmers Market um, pulls from Pettis County and its contiguous counties. Um, but we do get more and more lake traffic as people are coming through from Kansas City on a Friday evening that they're learning that the Sedalia Area Farmers Market is right there on Highway 65. It's easy to pull in and out of and get some fresh local food there, so it's a great option. Um, we also see people that um, quite often that are traveling with RV groups that um, come from all over the world, literally, mm -hmm. um, and are looking for a local experience. Mm. And 
you distribute to farm, how much of your produce goes to a, a farmer's market? I mean, how much of your... Through the market season, we probably send 50% of our produce directly through the farmer's market um, and directly into the hands of the consumer that way. And can we buy directly from you? We do, um, particularly during the off season. We offer that option for people that we deliver to some central points so that people have access to fresh local food all, all year round. So seasonally, what's your favorite food to eat? Seasonally? From a, a, a vegetable standpoint. What, what do you look forward to the most as a grower? Uh, fresh asparagus. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's, that's one of my favorites. It's got a very short window and there's nothing like eating fresh asparagus. And, and Beverly, given the fact that you have active involvement with the farmer's market, are there vegetables that your kids won't eat? No, they no. really are adventurous, and I am so thankful for that. They uh, will munch on asparagus just as happily as a blueberry. Um, so th they, I think they're somewhat unique in that regard, but I also think that people shouldn't underestimate what their own children might try. Um, it's important for them to see adults enjoying fruits and vegetables, um, but it's also important for the kids to at least have an opportunity to try those things, to work them into their diet just a little bit, so that when their body does have a craving, that at least that they'll know that uh, that fruit or vegetable is an opportunity for them. And you know, so much attention is being paid to sugar. Yes. Uh, on a, a big time sure. level in mm -hmm. terms of its impact on us, but uh, f freshness, Quality, cost, health, uh, what do you think, Jeannie, is probably the, the primary driver for thinking about locally grown? I think from a, for a lot of people it's fresh and that translates to more nutritional and easier to, to assimilate the nutrients from it. Um, it lasts longer, it tastes better. A lot of that is because it's fresher. And <laughs> Beverly, what changes have you seen in the, the market since you've opened it? I mean. Well, certainly we have more growers. Um, we find that more growers find it uh, economically viable for them to enter into the farmer's market because it is growing. Uh, I hate to That's use that right. term, but it is growing. Our, our target audience is growing as more people learn about the advantages of fresh local food um, and realize the value of it. Because sometimes, honestly, you will pay more for fresh local food, but the nutrients are so much higher that the value is many times increased. So it's already embedded within Exactly. All the things that you would buy food for, you get kind of right. a multiplying effect. Mm -hmm. Precisely. And, and you did mention the community supported agriculture. Are you both seeing the, the growth of community markets and access to locally grown? I am seeing that both in the farmers markets and in, in the community supported agriculture. There's more and more options for people out there who want to get to local produce. There's and it's easy, again, to, to get out on the web and look for farmers markets. They're all over the Missouri. Um, and search for CSAs because they're in your area, You and they're, they're a great way to get a hold of some fresh local food. You know, and we were talking about kids, but obviously uh, a change in culture from this convenience kind of mentality that we live in, um, it has to start pretty early. Yes. 4-H, um, FFA. Yeah. You were involved with that? Didn't I you? was, absolutely. And, you know, they teach a lot of that kind of thing. But any way that you can get the kids involved in the kitchen or in the garden is an awesome thing. And the more they're involved, the more they're engaged, the more they're willing to try things. And the more they realize the value of good nutrients. Now, I'm focused now on, on becoming much more of a healthy eater. And I'm coming to the Sedalia Area Farmer's Market. When can I buy? How, how is it open? And uh, where is it? The Sedalia Area Farmers Market is uh, located at the Showcase of Missouri Agriculture, which is the Missouri State Fairgrounds. Uh, we're open on Tuesdays from 3 to 6 and Fridays from 3 to 7, um, or until we're out of products, but uh, we're, we're always open until at least those hours. And uh, consumers can find us easily there on Highway 65, right across from Katie's Barbecue. Ah, I, I, know, I do know where Katie, so that gives you the contrast of opportunities to have a little barbecue and, and pick up some fresh vegetables. What about seasonal? Uh, do you have access? Uh, what do you do in the wintertime? Um, actually, in the wintertime, we grow still quite a bit of things. Uh, growing hydroponically, we have some, some options that aren't open to other, other growers. So we maybe don't have quite the pace that we do in the summer but we're still there and we're still growing um we do kale we do spinach we do swiss chard lots of lots of things are available through the winter time and of course this winter was kind of an extended it was a wonderful winter to grow 
Well, I can't tell you how much we appreciate uh, not only the engagement in the topic, uh, but the encouragement you're giving to people to think healthy about what they eat. Um, is there a, a most important thought as you think about uh, where we can gain access to, to more information? Uh, well, there is SedaliaAreaFarmersMarket.com is our website. And from there, you can link to other important healthy eating sites. Uh, one I would give a shout out to is the Environmental Working Group, which lists uh, the cleanest produce and the dirtiest produce in terms of pesticide use. Ah. So that can help the c consumer make their buying decisions. Tell us that site one more time. Our website is SedaliaAreaFarmersMarket.com and EnvironmentalWorkingGroup.org is the other. Well, locally grown and organic products are certainly important to the lives of the people of Central Missouri. As we've seen from our discussion, freshness, health, and a relationship between producer and consumer are all key aspects of this quality of life issue. Beverly and Jeannie, thanks to both of you for being part of this evening and helping us to explore the various parts of this very important topic. And thanks to our viewers for tuning in to Central Missouri Tomorrow on KMOS-TV. Good night.